Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to knit the Big Fast Pocket Scarf, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link out to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need. For this pattern, we're using Red Heart Irresistible. It, you'll need approximately three balls to make a full adult sized scarf, less if you want to make a shorter scarf for children, but that's optional. Also optional are the buttons. You can see I've got two big buttons here on my finished scarf, and I think it just adds a nice touch, but again, completely optional. You will also, of course, need a pair of knitting needles. These are 25 millimeter US 50s by Susan Bates. Let's go ahead and get started with our big, fast pocket scarf. First, let's take a quick look at the finished Big Fast Pocket Scarf. Now it gets its name because it's obviously big. You can see by the scale of my hands here, this is a jumbo yarn, it makes a big scarf. It's only seven stitches wide, so that should tell you a little bit about how big it is. It also has pockets on each end of the scarf right here, which are very simply made by working in length, and then we fold up that section and seam it up the sides. Now, as I mentioned, here, I'll kind of stick that in there so you can see how it works. The button itself on each of these pockets is completely optional and it's merely decorative. So I've just sewn it on with some matching thread. So now let's make the actual stitches together. All right, now the Big Fast Pocket Scarf is absolutely a beginner level knitting pattern. So you can use whichever cast on you prefer. If you only know one cast on, absolutely use that one. I'm going to use the long tail cast on. It's my favorite, and I think, for me at least, it was the easiest one to learn as a beginner. So I've got my slip knot on my hook. I've got a good length here for my tail, and of course, the other end here is attached to my skein of yarn. So I'm just going to hold my yarn up here and start putting my stitches on the hook. And for this setup row, we are just going to cast on seven stitches total. Now, the one thing about the long tail cast on Especially with a big yarn like this, it can be hard to guesstimate how much yarn you're going to need uh, on each end, basically where to put your slip knot. So absolutely, I still, every time I start a knitting project, I usually have to pull it out once and start again because I've left way too much and I don't want to waste the yarn or I didn't leave quite enough and I'm worried my tail will be too short. But I do find that at least for these smaller projects, and obviously these are giant stitches, but it is only seven stitches. So I'll go, go ahead and call it a smaller project for that purpose. Um, so for these smaller projects, I find if I just wind the yarn around my needle first and count out however many stitches I want to make plus a couple extra loops, it seems to work out pretty well for the most part. I don't know if there's a good scientific mathematical formula for it, but hopefully somebody, if there is one, please share it in the links. That would be awesome to know because I think most of us are just kind of guesstimating a lot of the time. All right, so now I've got seven loops on my hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is my cast on row all finished. The rest of this will just get woven in, or if I want to, I can use it for the seaming at the end. So then I'm going to turn to come back the other way and go ahead and pick up my second needle. Now, row one, which is repeated many times throughout this pattern, is simply to slip one knitwise. So we're just going to slip this stitch right off that needle onto the other one knitwise. And then we're going to knit to the end. So we're just going to knit every remaining stitch until we get to the end here. So just six more stitches. Now, obviously I'm not demonstrating exactly how to knit on this video. I think that would be a separate series of videos that I haven't made yet. Um, I've done a few different knitting projects. I've done some things for other companies, but I haven't done a whole lot of knitting videos for Moogly yet. So if that is something you guys would be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. We can look at putting together a knitting series for you guys. All right, there we go. Go ahead and put that down with these big needles. <laughs> it can get a little noisy. There we go. All right, so that is our row one. We just slipped the first one knitwise and then knit on across. Now for our row two, it's going to be slip one purl wise. So just go ahead and pull that off your needle and then purl every remaining stitch to the end. And you can see with this jumbo yarn just how quickly we run through it and that we've got, oh my gosh, so much length already. 
I mean, that's the thing about knitting, right? You could, if with some of those thin yarns, you could be knitting for hours and only have a couple inches made with this great big jumbo yarn. Like I say, that's why it's got its name, Big Fast Pocket Scarf. So I'm just going to knit a couple more stitches here. Sorry about the noise of the needles on the table here. Trying to kind of keep everything in focus. Whoops. Dropped that stitch. Not a problem. Get it back on there. There we go. All right. So that is our row two. Just slip the first one purl wise and then purl on across. So we would just repeat those two rows, one and two, until we have eight inches of length. And you can measure that. Let me pull that through a little bit, loosening up. There we go. So you can go ahead and just take your tape, me tape measure and measure until you've made eight inches, just repeating rows one and two over and over again. This will become a flap that when your scarf is all done, will fold up this way to form the pocket. So that button that we saw on our finished scarf would land right about here. So like I say, just continue doing that for eight inches. After you've made eight inches, whatever row you have finished on, you want to repeat that last row again. So just as our little example here, the last row I made working across here was slip one purl wise and then purl across. So if I had finished eight inches here, I would go ahead and do that again. So basically whatever I'm going to be doing for this row is going to be the opposite of what I was already doing on this side. So this is the right side. This is our row one right side. This is our row two side. It's the wrong side of the scarf. So whatever row you make when you finish those eight inches, repeat it again. And that's going to essentially flip it so that when we fold up that pocket, the right side is showing against the right side on the outside of the scarf. So let me show you what I mean. Like I said, our last row was purl. So let's go ahead and do another purl row right here. Slip it purl wise, just as we just did. And then just purl each remaining stitch across. There we go, one. Pull up some more yarn here. Two. And three. And four. Five. And six, there we go. So, let me straighten that out here. You can see that has flipped it. So now I've got my pearls on this side and my knits on this side. So after you've done that, then you want to go ahead and resume the pattern. So I just made a pearl, pearl row. So next I would make a knit row, like I said, flipping the sides. And then we would do that for another eight inches. And that creates the total of our pocket. So when we flip it up this way, you can see that row where we switched is right at the bottom of our pocket. And then this forms the pocket that gets sewn along the sides. So you would just repeat that for another eight inches. Then the only other two types of rows you need to know for this scarf are in the scarf section. Okay, here we have the finished scarf again. We've made those first eight inches, then we switched so that made the next eight inches, so that when it folds up together, it makes that scarf uh, pocket on the end. Then we continue with the scarf portion, which is in the middle until we get to the end where we make our second pocket. And this scarf section is where you can customize it for your recipient, whether that's you or you're making the scarf for someone else. And my best advice here is to make this scarf section as long as the person is tall, minus 16 inches. And the minus 16 inches is because each of these pockets is eight inches. And a good rule of thumb, if you're making a scarf for someone, is to make it approximately as long as they are tall. The reason being, our height is usually approximately equal to our wingspan or our fingertip to fingertip measurement, which is just about right for your average scarf, certainly just right for one with pockets. So let me just demonstrate the couple of rows that we use on the scarf section before we get to that second pocket, and then we'll be just about done with our big, fast pocket scarf. Okay, so the scarf portion of the scarf, the section between the pockets, is made up of the same two rows over and over again. And for this section, again, you want to maintain what you did for the back of the pocket. So continue keeping the knit side on the knit side and the purl side on the purl side, not from that first eight inches, but from the previous eight inches that you did right before the scarf portion. So basically, you want to, whatever row you're doing next, whenever it's a knit row, for the knit rows, you will slip the first stitch purl-wise, then go ahead and put the yarn in back here and knit each remaining stitch until there's one left. So that would be the next five here since we've got seven total. So there's two, three, four, 
three. Oop, looks like I picked up a loop of the yarn there. We'll just slip that on off. Here we go. Four. Five. And then with just one stitch left, I'm going to go ahead and just purl that very last stitch. There we go. Pull that around and through. So that's any time you come to a knit row for that scarf. Of course, then coming back on the other side, you're going to have your purl rows. So all the purl rows are worked the same way. We slip the first stitch purlwise and then simply purl to the end. And that's it. Those are on the only four lines of instruction for this scarf. When you get to the other end, then you'll go back to that rows one and two where we just treated the ends a little differently and do that for another eight inches and then flip it by repeating that last row. Remember when we did that to flip our knit and purl sides, we need to do that one more time so that when that last pocket gets folded up, it's on the right side. But otherwise, that's it. That's all the knitting and purling that you need to know to make this scarf. Now, like I said, after you've made all that length, you'll go ahead and cut off your ends and then you'll have just a little bit of seaming to do. So let me talk about that just a little bit too here. All right, so when you get to the end, you can go ahead and cast off as desired using whatever favorite cast off method you like. Then, like I said, you're gonna have a long straight scarf and you'll have two ends where the knit and purl side are opposite from the scarf. So when you fold those two up, then you'll be able to take just a little bit more yarn and seam up the sides. I just went through both layers. Let me kind of hold these two together here. I just went through both layers. I used a set of stitch markers to sort of hold them in place and then just used a yarn needle to whip stitch them together. And I do have a separate tutorial on the whip stitch linked at the link in the description. One note, however, on the needles for sewing this kind of jumbo yarn. This right here is sort of a standard yarn or tapestry needle, um, something you probably have. I know I've got probably a dozen of them in my own collection. But for this big jumbo yarn, if you like using big jumbo yarns, I strongly recommend that you invest in a couple of these large yarn needles that are typically made of plastic. Um, once in a while you can see them in metal, but not typically this big. You can see mine even has a little bit of a bend to it because I've been using it to really pull this yarn through. But you'll need a great big eye on your needle like this in order to sew this jumbo size yarn. Now, if you don't have one of these, if they're not available to you, you can just go ahead and use your fingers to try and weave those ends in a little bit. I would recommend you just get those ends onto the inside of the pockets and then you can just leave a little extra length in there. As long as it's not gonna drive you crazy, you can leave that little extra length inside the pocket and uh, then you won't have to worry about it coming out. Another good thing is that this yarn, I believe, does have some wool content, which helps keeps it from trying to come undone and those stitches trying to work their way back out as well. So that's another great thing. I also wanted to mention the buttons. Like I said, they're completely decorative, but one of the fun things about this pattern, because you can use such simple yarn with it, is that you can really dress it up. I had a hard time actually picking out the buttons for this pattern, and I ended up getting a couple others that I was considering. I just wanted to show you guys, because I think they really changed the look of the scarf. You can see if I put my hand over this wooden one here, you get a really different look, just depending on what button you want to add. So have some fun with it. I mean, buttons, appliques, you can definitely add your personal touch to, to the big fast pocket scarf. The great thing is with these jumbo needles and these great big yarn, even somebody like me who's a very slow knitter can whip one of these up within a day or two. It's just a lot of fun and it's very practical. And I really enjoyed having the extra pockets with any of my outfits this winter. Now I just needed to get cold enough to wear it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, let me know if you'd like to see more knitting on the Moogly blog channel. Have a great day. Happy crocheting. Happy knitting. Happy yarning. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.